Albert and Sil Preciado, gracias. Thank you so much for being with us in Como Lo Hizo. Gracias por tenernos aquí. Gracias. All right. So, hope you feel at home. We can, you know, talk freely about what we feel, what we think. This is, you know, just a, a conversation, a friendly conversation. So, I was uh, checking on some uh, videos that you post in social media, Albert. And I was watching um, you talk about your young years in LA. You mentioned a groin surrounded by guns, drugs, bullets. Tell us about it. How was it? Well, it was a learning experience. Uh, it, I, I just thought it was fun because I was a little kid. So I, <laughs> how I old are you? How? I was like six, five, six, six seven. All right. Yeah, but I thought it was fun because when when my mom or my dad would say like. They're gonna shoot, they're gonna <laughs> shoot, me, me decían, agachate, agachate, agachate. <laughs> and I knew that it was like, I would have fun like uh -huh. running to the couch and just like diving and, and diving underneath. And, 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 and it was, it was kind of fun because I never, I mean, I still don't know what it feels to get a bullet um, yeah. hit, hit you, but yeah, but uh, I, I thought it was fun because I, I grew up watching like Batman and you know, and you see all the, all the, all the shots and everything and it's kind of cool. So it was kind of a movie for you in your imagination. Yeah. As yeah. a child. Yeah. That was where? That was in Echo Park. Echo Park. Be Beverly and Burlington. I don't know if you know where that is. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's hot. Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> but anyways, and what about you, Silvia? Sil? I grew up in La Puente. Uh, soy de Zacatecas. So, vine aquí cuando tenía, creo que dos años, por ahí, casi los tres. Um, Has anybody ever told you, sácate, sácate, sácate? Ay, <laughs> um, sí, so, y yo fui a, crecí en La Puente. En realidad no, no, no conocí nada hasta que me gradué de la high school. So, once I left high school, I was like, okay, there's another world outside of La Puente. So. Interesting. And you, uh, Albert, you came from Mexico? I was born here in in uh, L.A., okay. but my parents are both from Mexico City, so they came when they were 30, and they taught me how to speak Spanish and nothing else, uh, no other no other, no other language. So when when I was when it was my my turn to go to elementary school, they said I'm gonna we're gonna send them to Granada Hills because uh, Granada Hills is a safer environment. So I took the school bus, an hour ride. I cried the whole way when I got there. I thought I was like in, a, in, in like it was another galaxy because everybody had uh, yellow hair and freckles and everybody was white. So I was like, who the hell are these people? <laughs> and it was because it was a white community. So I was the only brown, I was like one of the five brown kids in the whole school. So they put me on special ed class and um, in special ed class and then they, put, they ended up finding out, well, he's not really special ed. The, problem with him is that he doesn't speak English so he doesn't understand and that was my start in elementary school that was so interesting and you guys are married I have to, yes. to disclose that and uh, so and you also are partners in business correct yes we are so what was first love or business you want to answer it? I think uh, well when I met him he was doing real estate right And I was like, what does this guy do? He was like, I was a waitress and a bartender, and he was picking up these $15,000, $20,000 checks. I've never seen so much money in one check at once, really. And then he's like, well, I could introduce you to this realtor, and you could start do doing real estate with him. So that's what we did. So technically, I would say it was business first, and then we started hanging out a lot. Then he realized how smart I was and beneficial <laughs> I was to his business. <laughs> <laughs> you you, you want to hear the the real story? Okay, now what's your side? Sad story. She's just really conservative. 
But, oh um, my god. The, the way I met her was at In N Out. Uh, yeah. I went out, I went out nightclubbing with my friends, and then she went out nightclubbing with her friends, and then after after the club, you want to go eat, you want to get a nice bite, so we were leaving the club, heading to In and Out, and so was she. And uh, my friend tells me, "Hey, you gotta meet this drop dead gorgeous girl in this white dress," and because I was like the, I was like the the guy, uh, like they were following me because I would pay the bills and and I, I was like kind of like the popular one. So they would go out with me uh, because I, they knew I would get tables and there was a lot of girls and the tables and all that stuff. So he called me right away and he's like, Albert, you got to meet this girl. I go there and I'm like, she, Sylvia always had like these nice legs. <laughs> and she always used to wear the shortest skirt you could ever find. Uh -oh. And I was like, whoa, those are some nice legs. And I said, I got to go talk to her. So I followed her to in and out We went to in and out got her number. And I closed her uh, on that same night for her to go with me and, and go to my house for an after party that I told her. But little did I know that when when I entered the freeway, because she said she was going to follow me, but <laughs> when I when I turned into the freeway, she just kept going straight. <laughs> and then I'm like, Shh, like I'm not allowed to cuss right here. Mm. So, so like like I was like shoot, but I said the the other word, and and I couldn't go back, so I I, I had to leave and then. Luckily, I got her number, and she gave me the right number, mm -hmm. and then that's where it, it all started. And then, um, yeah, then, I mean, then from there on, after uh, eight months of me trying to get her on a date, she finally went out with me, and that, and and she was history. That's awesome. So you were in real estate already. How old were you? I was about 24, and she was 21. So you were young, and you already were successful in your. Yeah, that's a whole other story. I was making a lot of money, and, and that was the year that I lost it all. Okay, so did you get married before you lost it all? No, after. After. So, okay, so how what happened? Well, I was um, I, I was making a lot of money, and, and I was my priorities were messed up. So I was my priorities were parties, girls, and not work. Uh, I mean, I still worked, but... I wasn't I wasn't intel intelligent uh, with business uh, decision with making my business decisions, and I didn't have any mentors. I didn't have any as much knowledge as I needed, so my priorities were all messed up. And I had bad uh, bad friends, toxic environments, and 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 you know like I I lost it all uh, because I made wrong decisions. And then when I lost it all. I was a bad guy like with with women I was going out with a lot of women and and waking up late and then little by little they repos they foreclosed one of my houses I had two houses they foreclosed another one then they repossessed my Mercedes and then they started cutting my electricity then my gas finally when I have no no electricity and then they cut my gas like it's it was really cold where I lived because I lived in the hills in Pasadena so mm -hmm. I, I it was like taking cold lonely <clears throat> showers I, I couldn't fake it anymore so finally I told her one day when they cut my gas hey can you pick me up electricity and uh, and and I hadn't so I couldn't see I couldn't shower it was too cold so she picked me up and we went to eat and then um, during the day I was good because the Sun came out but uh, she for, she forgave me and uh, when they foreclosed on my home and I became homeless like I had nothing but my Ford Explorer a laptop and an iPhone and she said um, well she answered my call and she picked me up and and I was good and because when I lost everything I realized that the all the friends went went away because I was I didn't have any money no more parties no more fun no more women uh, no more alcohol no more all of that so she forgave me and she was the only person that I wanted uh, she was the only girl only person only girl that I wanted uh, to get forgiveness from and she forgave me and and every year after that um, I mean, my life and our lives has gotten better and better and better. Yeah. So that's interesting. It's an amazing story. But beyond that, you just say it with such a freedom and I appreciate that. However, who told you that you were going in the wrong way? Because you could keep going in that direction and forget it and you'd be lost by now. Did anybody mention or mentor you or told you somebody was or what? An inspiration from where? How do you change your, your your ways? Since since I was born, uh, my my parents always um, were great parents. They loved me very much, and they overprotected me. 
and because that's the way they knew that's the only way they knew over protect love and care and my and they taught me one th one really important thing which was uh, hard work so my dad took me with him to paint because my dad was a painter in Beverly Hills he used to paint houses in Beverly Hills so he took me with him when I was six and that was the first time I went to Beverly Hills and I saw these mansions and I saw a red Ferrari and at six years old I promised my dad that because um, I told my dad how come you don't drive a Ferrari and obviously like when we're ducking and running away from gunshots and there's drug dealing going on outside that's that's not a good place to have a Ferrari but I didn't understand that because I was a kid so my dad told me that it's not for us uh, and I said what what do you mean and so he explained that it was really hard to do that you had to work really hard and in order to achieve that level of success so I promised my dad that's what I want to do and I'm gonna work my ass off and I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna make you guys proud and I'm gonna get a red Ferrari so that's the whole that's where the whole Ferrari thing started because it was it's been a dream of mine since I was six years old and um, and I did it for my my parents one, one of the reasons so your inspiration were your parents yeah so because you were going in the wrong direction wrong way you lost everything you became technically homeless right and and I was so ashamed uh, because people ask me, well, what, how come you just didn't go back to your parents' house uh, and stay there right away? And, and I was just ashamed to go back and tell them that I failed, that I messed up. So that's why I we we used to sleep in the Ford Explorer, but it wasn't that bad because we used to <laughs> pick, we used to pick the best neighborhoods. So so we were staying like in you know in the hills. Uh, sometimes we would stay in Beverly Hills. Sometimes. So you both together were yeah. spending the night. In the car. In the car, yeah, we did everything in the car. Wow. Quítate. Así le diría. We we had we had some of the best times in the in that car. Some of the best nights. Um, let me say something. You know, it's it's funny because a lot of people are like, oh my god, that's so horrible. And I think it's all about perspective, really. And we were young. Obviously, I couldn't take them to my mom's house, vice versa. We were just trying to figure out what to do. You so know? you left home. Well, I was kind of like. Technically, yes, but I could still go there and be like, hey, mom, or whatnot, right? But I'm not going to be like, hey, I'm living with the guy in his car. That would be right. kind of weird. <laughs> but I don't know. It's When so, I think about it, it wasn't so bad. Uh, so, and then what happened? How did you were able to put it together and come back and be successful? Well, before that, just to share a little bit more um in 2008, the mortgage uh, meltdown happened. That's when I lost everything, the mortgage right. crash. Because I was, I've been the mortgage uh, originator, uh, a loan originator, my entire life. I started in real estate for like a month or two, and then I just transitioned to loans, mortgages. So I, I, I've been the mortgage guy, which is the name of the company, the mortgage right. guys. Correct. Yeah. Since I started uh, really into business and. I lost everything in 2008, but one thing that I learned from my parents uh, and, and that I stuck to and I believe in, and I'd rather die than be a quitter. So I never quit, and I, I, I'll never quit. You'll find me dead before I quit. And, and I stayed in the business, and that's why I said, you know what, when the mortgage uh, meltdown happened, every loan off, a lot of mortgage people left the industry and went to a different thing. Because now people that were, you know, people that had no skills, uh, that got into the business just to make big commissions. They they had no skills, so they couldn't survive. So I stayed, and I knew that I could fight it through, and, and that's why we slept in the Ford Explorer, because all we needed was really a place to sleep and a place to shower and and a computer to work and a, night, and a cell phone to make calls and call clients. And we would use the gym. We would sneak into the gym because I couldn't afford the gym, so I would sneak into the gym and shower there, work out, because I was still... I always been into health, into fitness, even when I was... You know, like drinking and partying and doing all those crazy things. I would still exercise, but it was in a good combination. So um, I I stuck with it, and my income dropped from two hundred and forty thousand a year to about sixty forty thousand a year. And obviously, I couldn't afford the same lifestyle, so that's why I lost everything. But then every year, it, it increased from sixty to eighty, from eighty to over a hundred, from a hundred to a hundred and fifty, and then I got to three hundred. And then every year, it kept getting better and better and better, and I just got everything back by a lot more so th there is always a key moment for any stage in life like you met her like you had to be sleeping in your car key moment now how do you what's the key moment if you remember from that moment where you were technically homeless almost broken what was the moment that you said okay 
this was this what I'm doing is what is going to take me back into what I'm dreaming of my my goals. Do you remember that precise moment? I don't know if you, I don't know if you remember, but I'll, but I'll, maybe you'll remember and you could add on to it. But when I was um, every year, I got a little bit better, but I but I wasn't perfect. So let's say I, I was in, I was in getting fifteen percent better a year, fifteen percent, fifteen percent, fifteen percent. But in the first couple of years, I was still like she would go she she would leave and she would go stay at her mom's house. I would go and party with my friends and you know with be with other girls and things like that. And and I was I wasn't a great guy. I was still getting like in trouble, uh, and and I think make, I know making mistakes. Point. And and then one day, I was out late, and I was just I was I was partying, and I didn't sleep because uh, I was under the influence. So I I wasn't I didn't sleep for an entire day. So it's like six seven a.m. and I leave, and I get in an accident and I hit a car, mm -hmm. and and I'm like I'm bad. Like I've been I was drinking all night. And uh, among other things, I mean, I, I, I did drugs. I didn't do anything. Cr I never stuck a needle in, in, in me, and, but, but I, did, I did drugs that would keep you up. And I crashed, and I hit a car. And I'm like, damn, I'm like really drunk right now but, uh, and really high. But, um, and then the cops get there. I had shades on, and since it was the morning, it was daylight. <laughs> so they didn't even notice that I was like really messed up. And I didn't have insurance. Uh, and and this was like a year after a, a couple of years after 2008 so I was already making a little bit of good I was doing okay but I was still surviving and fighting the 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 meltdown of the mortgage industry and that was when I noticed like damn this was a close call I could have gotten my fourth DUI and then after that I said you know what I have to change I, I, this is enough, and and that was the moment that I just said I'm not gonna do any of this, and I, I just I made some changes in my life, and and I separated from toxic people. That's so important. That was the turning point. Do you want to add to that? Yes, I do want to add to that. It was really because I was there with him, and so you were in the accident. I was keeping him awake. Yeah, and I'm like Albert, Albert, you know, because I'm I'm always watching my surround surroundings, and I like to be in control of situations that's why it's always an issue when he drives because i hate being a passenger right i'm literally driving in the <coughs> passenger seat always it's crazy but I, I remember that and i remember just thinking like f like what are we doing like what are we doing right because getting rid of bad habits it, it's hard you have to replace it with new habits and that's just what we were used to doing which was going out working all day going out but that time it was just really the wrong crowd and i even told him i'm like who are these people like you have to pay for everything like they don't come unless we have certain things you know which drugs in other words uh, i'm not really a drug person but i have experimented a tiny bit and we just that that was scary because they could have taken him away i mean it was really a close call and i think for both of us it was more of a realization of what are we doing like, what is this? Why are we doing this to ourselves? And like I told him, it's a habit because it doesn't even feel good. We're wondering why we did that, wanting it to go away or for the effect to wear out when we didn't have to do it. Nobody forced us. Does that make sense? But when you're in an environment <coughs> where everybody's doing it, it's a little bit harder to say, to resist to it, in other words. Right. But the interesting part is that you guys were able to get to that point, the turning point, and decide, okay, this is not good for us, we have to change. And that's, you know, you need a will, you know, to do that. So it's not like, because yeah. most of the people don't do it. And they go back and, you know, the problems keep growing and then, you know, you don't, you don't end in the right place. But you guys have that, that seed of wellness, of, you know, of being good human beings. And you decided, okay, this is not good for me. We're going to change it. And now, what happened after that accident? How did you turn the page and really open the new movie in your life? That's when everything got better and better. Well, after that accident, I didn't have any insurance. <laughs> so this, I had an Audi A6. And, and this was a car that I financed under my dad's credit because my credit was bad. I had $80,000 of collections. I had a, like a 480 FICO score. No loan, no, no credit cards, no credit card, no credit company would accept me. 
So I, I got under my, my dad's name, but my credit was getting a little bit better. Years were passing by and it was getting better from the 2008 crash. It, this was a, around 2010, 2011, like when, when I had that car and I was doing a bit better. We were getting back on our, uh, back up on our feet. And um, I, cra I hit, uh, I crashed my Audi A6 into this Nissan Morango. Is it Morango? I don't know. It that was a weird that car. ugly Nissan um, <laughs> SUV. Uh, well, I don't. Morano. Morano, yeah. Murano, so yes. I, I hit it, and and so they they, they and I, I'm sorry if you have a Morano, <laughs> but 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 um, I this guy came out and he said you hit my car and give me what's your insurance and I said oh, uh, and I said uh, you know what I don't have it with me but um, I I could I could fix your car, so we left and everything so he he gave me his estimate he took it to his place. And he Six said it's grand, it's it's, five it's, grand? it's no it was like seven thousand I think seven thousand dollars and he said it's seven thousand dollars, and that was like all the money that I had in my uh, available, so I remember I gave him all that money and I wiped my all my savings that I had, yeah. so now I was like, mm. uh, <laughs> real and, bottom line. <laughs> and, and but but more importantly I was like you know what I could have ended up in jail yeah. for a fourth uh, DUI. Because I didn't, I had three DUIs, but the third one wasn't a DUI because I got a lawyer and they reduced it to a wet reckless. So because it wasn't considered a third DUI, I didn't go to, I didn't get jail time. Yeah. So, so I did turn in myself into the federal prison, but they told me like, you're lucky, it's your lucky day. You don't have to come in, just check in, check out and they let, let me go. So, so you were really going through tough times, rough times. I mean, I, and it was all because of the wrong environment. So, so when I put myself in the right, and, and yeah, you know, when, when I put myself in the right environment, that's when everything started changing. Well, we changed brokerages. Remember that? Yeah. So I, I moved from from a different from one broker to a different broker. Uh, the like growth because you really went fast. How 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 did it happen? And how fast? And what do you do that was b besides changing the broker? What was the real change? To 2011, uh, I, I moved to a to a different broker, who was the last broker I worked for, and uh, this this company, uh, the per the person was Mark. So I so I went into his brokerage. He was my he was my my mentor at the time. He was a millionaire, and he told me, Albert, uh, you have to be more structured because I was really wild. And I was just like a pusher. Like I would just get a, I would get a deal, and I would just want to close it fast. And like my old ways, like I would want to like take shortcuts. And he told me you have to be structured, and you can't take shortcuts. You have to get an assistant. You have to run your loan officer career like a business. So I started getting that more. I started getting more polished in business. And then he told me, Albert, when you make money, you have to get that money, get a little bit of it and put it aside so that you could buy some real estate. You got to start buying multi-units. And I said, oh, nobody has ever told me that. And so I started listening to him. 2013, I made 300,000 and I decided to open up my own business. So that's when I opened up the mortgage guy because one day I was laying around in the couch and uh, her sisters who now, now, I mean, now both of them work for us. <laughs> uh, it's funny, as funny as it sounds, uh, Evelyn and Crystal. So Evelyn now is our nanny. And Crystal is our front desk girl for the mortgage guys. So at the time, I'm laying in the sofa and I'm daydreaming, and I'm just thinking like, just daydreaming. And you know, we're we're doing okay, but we're not doing that good. And she asked me like, what are you doing? What are you thinking about? And I said, I'm thinking about opening up a company. And she tells me, well, what are you gonna call it? And I tell her, well, I do mortgages, and I'm a guy, so I'm gonna call it the mortgage guy. And I, I'm just thinking about, yeah, and the logo is going to be like a guy with a sports coat and he's going to have a red tie and a, and, a, and a blue, like a navy blue sports coat, just like Donald Trump because his outfit, because Donald Trump, I used to read a lot of his books and I was really inspired and in, 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 into business and I loved his books. And I said, that's I'm going to wear that outfit and it's going to be me with spiky hair because I used to have hair at the time. And um, now, now that's a different story, but I, I, I cut my hair like this because it saves me time. Uh, but um, I tell her I'm gonna call it the mortgage guy. I'm gonna name it the mortgage guy, and we're gonna start a business. And then that's when the idea hit. And sometimes um, you have ideas that could be billion dollar ideas, could be million dollar ideas, or it could be a hundred thousand dollar idea. Depends where you're at in life at, at the time. And people just don't execute. Yeah. And I just said, you know what? I'm gonna make it happen. And now it takes execution. So so I executed on it. I went home. 
And I was thinking like, well, let me ask my, my current broker, Mark, how do you open up a company? How do you start? Uh, should I get a broker's license? Obviously, he didn't want to share any information because he thought I was going to become a competitor. And that's what most people think. Like, you can't ask him like, hey, how do I start a business to put you out of business? People <laughs> are scared. So I figured it out on my own. I went home. I Googled, how do you start a company? And then they and said, well, you could file a corporation, an LLC, or... And I'm like, oh, okay, so I filed a corporation, started a company, and then we started the mortgage guy. And then that's when everything started. And then the next part is when I met Grant Cardone. I don't know if you want to add something to that. Well, there was this broker who told Albert, her name is Gina. I don't want to say her last name, but she's like, why don't you become a broker? Because we did pretty well, just him and I, and we were like a team. Well, we are a team. And... Then we started working on because it's a it's a it's a long process. Like people think that it happens overnight and you just take a test, and it's not in reality that way. Especially when you have DUIs and you have to explain to the DRE why you have all this stuff on your record, right? So that was a that was I remember like sitting there writing letters with him. Like it's a process, and a lot of the times, you know, if any of you are listening and it just looks so long, you just have to start and just keep going because. For some, somebody, it could take six months to get to a certain place of what it's going to take to completely launch your business. And to others, it might take a year, two years. To, it, everybody's different, so it just depends. You know, the thing is you cannot quit because quitting is the easy part. That's the easy. You could just quit and be like, oh, whatever, it didn't work out, right? Yeah. Now, if you keep going, I always tell people this, time is going to pass regardless. So you might as well do it. Just follow through with the plan. You're going to be resilient. That's right. And, uh, okay, so you were doing good. Now you have the mortgage guy. And what happened then? Did you open another company? How many companies mm -hmm. you have today? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we have four businesses now. But uh, the fourth one is a silent one because that's just real estate investing. But we have three companies. We have the mortgage guys. We have Ambiance Realty. And we have Driven Enterprises, which is the newest one. Right. And, and the mortgage guy, uh, that, that was the initial company, the mortgage guy. But a mentor told me add an S to the company to make it the mortgage guys. So that's what we did, and that's why it's now the mortgage guys. Which I remember very clearly. He said the mortgage guy is a ten million dollar company, but the mortgage guys is a billion dollar company. And then my my eyes opened, and I said, you know what? It's going to be the mortgage guys. Interesting. Now you were growing. So how did you balance family? relationships and business was difficult fights arguments how did you handle you know difference in opinions with family uh, like what type of family your wife because you're uh, a partner at the same time you have a relationship correct yeah so most of the Latino entrepreneurs we do business with family and that's an issue and the family becomes a partner but a business is different to operate in, let's say, uh, let's say, a family. So how do you manage, you know, to keep both either together or separated in a way that business injects another kind of conversation and conflict? You know, how do you manage I, both and I keep it together? Really quick. So for us, it really, I mean, at least the way that I look at it, it hasn't really been that difficult because him and I are very similar. He has a lot of things I don't have and I have things he doesn't have so it makes us really powerful to complement together. each other. Exactly. And we both love to work. We both love money. Like I'm he's not lazy, I'm not lazy. Like we'll do whatever it takes. It doesn't matter if it's an all nighter, eleven PM like it never mattered. And we always put work first. So no matter what we had to do in our personal lives, like with family or whatnot, because it was him and I, we re our daughter is going to be, she's two and a half. So it was up until two, two and a half years ago, like even up until the day, I, right before I had to tell you, like it was just go, 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 go. We've never had a problem with that. So, which I think is a big part of why we're successful. Uh, but I mean, I don't know. We don't really fight that much. Sometimes he gets on my nerves, but that's normal. That's <laughs> normal. Yeah, I mean, we st sometimes she kicks me out of the room and I stay in the couch. <laughs> I think that's normal. We, we, we get in fights. We, get, we argue all, all the time, but we're, we're happy all the time. And I, I studied um, I study a lot of mentors, and, and I noticed that 
two in particular, they're my two mentors, because I have two mentors. Their wife uh, works with them. They work in the same business. They work together. They open the business together. And um, one of the most important things that I recommend to any guy or girl is to find the right partner. And I found the right partner. But I had to go through, like, I had to go through, like, thousands of, d of dates <laughs> yeah i'm being serious like justifying yeah, yeah come on thousands of dates <laughs> I, and 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 i found the right one and she was the first girl that i would that would tell me yes let's go to the gym yes let's go to the office yes let's go work yes let's go do an open house she didn't even know what an open house was but she would go with me yes let's do this and i and i would tell her hey, you know what let's go to the beach and just um tan and drink let's go <laughs> she was she was just like yes yes to everything yes, yes. and i've never met somebody that works um close to as hard as me and it happens to be my wife like we have competitions where where she wants to, she wants to go uh and we're like having the competition who's going to stay at the office the last longest. night for and, example and, i mean she's she never beats me in that department <laughs> That's but, a lie. But, but, she, but she comes close like she's <laughs> pregnant and she's like the last one in the office that's so and she she works with really, she works really hard so that's I found the right woman. That's so and partner. Yeah. I mean so she covers both yeah, she, both there. That's awesome. That's she's, just, you know. she's my best friend, so sometimes people ask me, uh like people go out and they cheat on their wives and I'm like, Well, why do you do that? Like, um she's my best friend. So when I think about about it, I'm like, why would I hurt my best friend? I wouldn't so that's why why would I why would I have my phone you know a lot of people they put their phones backwards or they have passwords like she knows my password we and, have the same password and, yeah and, and we're, right. I just believe really big on ethics so like it's once you focus and you have a purpose and you stick to it uh, nothing can stop you because nobody I don't have any 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 dark areas like I I, I did in the in the past but now I don't have anything to worry about now when did you guys realize that you were going to be successful? Was when you got a big check or was just a moment that you have oh my, a revelation? Oh my God, we really made it at this point. It, do you remember that very moment when you said, this is it? <laughs> well, for me, the, the moment that I committed, uh, I, I knew I was going to be successful no matter what. Because, uh, and that was, and, and that, I mean, I, from the moment that I was six years old, I committed to success. I had to go through a lot of problems and a lot of ups and downs, but I knew that, that moment that I was going to be successful because I knew I had dreams and, and I knew that nothing can stop me. People, they could take everything that I have right now and I know that I could come back because one thing that they can't take away from me is my heart, my knowledge, and my experience. So I just feel unstoppable. And, and I'll tell you, I'll, sh I'll share something with you. The last six years that it took us since we, since we opened our company, our first one, the mortgage guy, it was a struggle. Like I lived paycheck to paycheck. I was broke. Uh, sometimes I didn't know how, how I was going to make it through uh, for the, the following week. How am I going to pay these bills? Because, yes, I had money. Yes, we had a good lifestyle. But all the money that we were making was going out because we needed to pay employees, offices, expenses. Mm -hmm. And, and survive. And then when we went, when we made money, we would put it all into real estate. So we did, we didn't have access to it. Yeah. But we were building assets, and we build assets, and that kept us hungry. Like that kept me grinding and hungry. I would wake up sometimes at 12:30 in the at midnight, and I couldn't sleep anymore. And I would get up and I would start thinking about ideas. Well, how can I be creative? And and I didn't want to get her nervous. I didn't want to worry her. I didn't want to get get her stressed out. So I handled all that pressure at 12:30 in the in the morning, and I was like, "How am I gonna figure this shit out? What am I gonna do?" Like, and I would create, I would get creative and come up with the money, and then we would survive one more day, and one more day, one more day, up until the last uh, seven months. I feel like we made it. Seven months ago, we made it. Just seven months ago. Yeah. So seven months. Think? Seven months ago was when we started making money in excess and very little money was going out and I was telling her like holy like what the hell happened it finally worked after all these years so this is re recent 
recently we in the last seven months we've mm. experienced an extreme level of, of success to me like I, 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 I this is private to us but we want to share it here right now after six uh, years of me uh, I I don't think she got to that point but for six years I was seriously battling heart attacks there were times where I was gonna collapse on the floor but I didn't mm. there were times when I couldn't swallow my food there were times when I couldn't breathe but I fought it and and uh, and, and finally after six years it paid off so what's success for you your definition of success changing the world and helping people helping yeah. everybody be successful when I make when when I make 200 billion dollars which is the vision uh, my our company vision I'm gonna use all of it to change the world to help people get better that's what I, that, that's that's what drives me I want to make my parents happy and I want to make my daughters and my wife happy so that when I die when my body's not here people could tell them hey your dad was the great the great Albert he <laughs> did this for the world he improved it that's what drives me no not not exotic women not exotic cars and not money well those are a plus <laughs> Those, that comes with the territory. Yeah. Well, not, 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 not the girls. <laughs> no, he can only, I tell him he could have as many as he could afford. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, Albert, you mentioned four principles that you see as critical for success. Could you share? Can I add one really quick thing? Of um, course. Uh, regarding like making it, how people say making it. So when you're growing a business, like it's something that took me a little bit long to not long to understand but i'm like okay well if we're netting x amount of money why do we have to hire two more people and then be netting half of that or whatnot right it's because you need the horsepower and that i know we got through our mentors that one of them told us hire you have to hire an army right and a lot of people want to just keep that money but then you can't do more than what you're doing so that was hard for me to understand but we always talk about everything and we come to I might not agree with something but then I hear him out and vice versa and then we come to an agreement then we execute our plan right so right. now we have a lot of employees and we have a lot of salespeople so that's what he means by now it's like wow right it's like so we just want to keep going so that's why we keep hiring people <laughs> so you have to you, you have the right team in place and now one of the difficult things when you are a founder owner is to learn how to delegate yes stuff that's so, hard for me so yeah. hard so how do you find the right people so you are able to learn that important principle of delegating in an operation because you have to delegate maybe even hire people that is better than you in certain areas so they can take you to the next level, correct? Because you are not supposed to know everything about it. Absolutely, yeah. and when you say they, they must be better than you because if you're the smartest person in the room, then you're in the wrong room. And I think Albert could add to this because he gave me an example of if I'd rather have 25 employees and pay, can you tell him about that? Well, you got to think about it. Uh, my four principles, by the way, are sales, systems training and the most important one in today's world is marketing in today's age and uh, I mean I want to say that I mastered them but I, but but it but it but I'm it's a work in progress because you always keep learning and and why I say that I mastered them is because that that same that those same principles that helped me build the mortgage guy uh, together uh, we copied it because it worked and we built ambiance realty and now we did this we applied the same four principles to driven driven uh, enterprises and same thing and i i believe that these four principles anybody can apply it to any business any industry and it'll work and and i coach people um that pay me a lot of money to coach them and they're in different in all kinds of different industries and these principles work for any industry restaurant construction insurance uh, anything that you could think of so when when the question you have to ask yourself is would you rather want would you rather have 25 employees that you pay a hundred thousand each in salary or would you have rather have 50 employees that you pay 50,000 each it's the same amount of money but it's less or more people who do you want and the answer is you want 25 that you pay a hundred thousand that you pay more because you're gonna have 25 
highly, highly uh, level uh, people. And if you have 50, you might have to correct them. So you want to have powerful people. Yeah. And we started high, we, when, when that all made sense. And then when I met Grant in Cancun, when I was making 300000 and I was capped, he said, well, you don't have any employees. You don't have any, you, you have to build an army. So I had to go all the way to Cancun to meet Grant Cardone to know like you have to, you need an army. But I was scared because I had a I hired a wrong assistant that used to get drunk on during lunchtime. <laughs> and and she was really nice to me in the mornings and then after lunch she would tell me like, Shut up. <laughs> and, I'm like, and, okay, and, give me and, the and, phone. And I, and I would say like, I what? To talk to her. <laughs> and, I, and she would say like, Yeah, shut up, you don't know what you're doing. And I'm like, and, like and then and then finally somebody told me, Well, she goes to next door and, and takes like five Jaeger bombs and then comes back and that's why she has courage now. So I was paying her very little money. That was my mistake. So I remembered, you gotta pay people good money to get good people. And and once we started hiring, then that's a whole different uh, conversation, mm. but you need different departments. You need experts in their in, in their fields, in their departments. So every yeah. department is, is, has to be an, an expert in that department. They have to own their roles. Right. So that's when we, I don't know if you read the book uh, called Principles by Ray Dalio, but and now we have different departments. I have a monitor in my office where I see the camera. I see every department. Every department has accountability. Every department, we have a, a company manual, which is, which is the manual has every department, with the roles from A to Z, start to finish. Uh, we have how-tos. Every time we have a problem, we address it. We add another page to our manual, company manual. And, and, you need, you, and we're still working on a manual, but the manual tells you how to run your business. Anything that you need to find, figure out, it's in the manual. Yeah. And if you don't have a company manual, which is part of your systems and procedures, your company's not going to grow. If you don't apply metrics, if you don't track all your stats, you're not going to grow. If you don't train people, you're not going to grow. Now, most importantly, is sales, because if you don't have any sales, then might as well not even have a business. So it's all those ingredients, but the most important one right now, if you want to scale your business, is marketing. And that's why I got a Ferrari that made me a lot of money the first month. And then I said, oh, shit, this works. So we got another Ferrari. <laughs> and then and then we just started marketing, and we learned about marketing. But I invested. We invested a lot of money into self-improvement. Mm -hmm. We paid a lot of money to, to experts to teach us so that we could learn and, and know how to do it. So you didn't go to formal school you didn't get a formal education college no nope. she dropped out i was a, I'm a college dropout and i had a 1.8 gpa in high school wow that's amazing you learn by yourself you like to read you hire mentors you invest in yourself yeah that so you increase your intellectual capital you invest in in your you know intellectual capital a lot of money yeah i'm an i'm an autodidact that means a self-taught person. Autodidacta in mm -hmm. Spanish. Autodidacta. Right. So mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, I, I read close to a thousand books. I lost count, but I read close to a thousand books. At one point, I was reading a book a week, a book a week, a book a week, a book a week, and some, a lot of them were audio books. So I would listen to the book a week, but I would always, I would go through ten crappy books to find one good book, and then I would find something really good from that book, and I would apply it, and I would get a, a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. One day I came across Grant Cardone's audiobook, Sell to Survive, and I got hooked. And then I met him. And now Grant Cardone is my friend. Patrick David is my friend. Brad Lee is one of my best friends. He just texts me right now. And we always, like, I FaceTime with Grant Cardone. We text. Whenever I have a question, I'll, I'll call, I'll text Patrick David. As a matter of fact, we're going to go meet Patrick in two weeks. I just found she out. She just found out. And that's our life. We just, whenever there's... Time, uh, when we have an opportunity to go get million dollar ideas or possibly a billion dollar idea we take off and we fly if I have to fly tonight I fly tonight we moved into this place called 10,000 building where we pay almost $20,000 a month to rent and we didn't do it because we wanted to, I mean first of all because we wanted to have safety for our daughter when we're not when we're not there but primarily because we wanted to put ourselves in that environment Mm -hmm. Because we did that, we met a guy that's worth four billion. Fred, his name is Fred. He started mentoring me and teaching me a lot of things, and I listen, and I listen, and and I consume all that. I ask him questions, I learn, I listen, mm -hmm. and and forget about the twenty thousand or the fifty thousand or the millions of dollars that you could spend on self improvement. 
all all that you're going to get a hundred times back of knowledge which is going to put you in the position where you're going to make who knows who knows how much you can make but mm -hmm. it's worth in knowledge in 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 yourself is the best investment you could ever make ever so what's the difference between being a boss and being a leader because you have many employees but you can be bossy and tell them what to do but you know you're going to get limited results but What's the difference from you, uh, for you, you know? A boss is just an ego thing. A leader is somebody that knows how to communicate and enroll people. And knows how to make, knows how to create other leaders. That's a good answer. And I also appreciate very much the fact that you invest in yourself, you too. You read a lot, so you learn a lot. Many people think that just going to school is going to make it, and I don't think. That's just the base, you know, the, the foundation of the house. But I think that most of the knowledge that you can really acquire and really going to be effective in your character, in your development, is out there in the mentors, in the people that write books. And imagine a person that is so wise. I always tell my, my friends and, you know, people, you know, family, imagine a person that went to school, whatever, Harvard, whatever, and then he became a huge leader. He's multi-billionaire. Mm -hmm. And then he writes a book. And then you go to the library or you just, you know, go to Amazon and put it in. And you pay 20 bucks, $20 for that Life billion story. dollar wisdom. And that's the best investment, you know, ROI that you can do for yourself. So I always emphasize the importance of not If you want to go to school, awesome, great. But you have to also expand your intellectual capital universe acquiring more knowledge of the people that already know more than you, that's going to take you to a totally different universe, yeah. isn't it? Sometimes people ask me, like, how many degrees do you have? And I say, <laughs> eight. And they're like, really? And I'm like, yeah, they work for the company. They work for, they work for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, what does the word money mean for you, for both of you? To me, freedom. Agreed. Options. Without money, you can't help yourself and you can't help people. You know, when people are like, oh, money's not that, not everything. It's not that important. I'm like, okay, well, you need it for everything. So it's kind of important. It's a little bit like oxygen, right? It's, yeah. It is. I mean, money is the way that society values your value. So, you know, they put a value into your talents and that's what you get. If you are good, society is going to give you more. Mm -hmm. but, but let me share something with this like our like nothing feels better than our people that uh, work for the company our partners them making money yeah we just had a guy from uh, our company recently that just got his own Ferrari so he just now now it's not only us that have a Ferrari now we have people that join the company we help them we mentored them and now they're driving their own Ferrari and they're creating their own success and we have people in our office we have a girl that went from being a receptionist to now being one of the highest earners, making more money than some branch managers. Yes. Branch managers, like people that have an office for the mortgage guys or for, or for ambiance, she makes more money than them. And she started as a front desk girl a, um, a year ago. That's so amazing. Yeah. She That's could afford a Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, is there a person or figure that you really admire that is not alive today? I mean, I'm not talking a family, I mean, father, mother, whatever, that's, of course, out of the question at this point, but is there someone that you really admire that was inspirational, a real mentor from what you learn, heard, or read about him or her? For me, it would be Abraham Lincoln and, and Martin Luther King. Okay, if they could be, or you would have the chance to be in front of one of them, what question would you ask them? You have one chance, one question. Well, I would ask uh, Abraham Lincoln ab about leadership, and I would ask uh, Martin Luther King about courage. The, re the reason why I like Martin Luther King is because of the courage that he had to speak up and be himself. So that's, I relate to him a lot in that way. So I would ask Martin Luther King, probably, that would be my first, my first person, what, what was your 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 key uh tip for being for having that high amount of courage to do something that changed the world yeah and for you so 
Hmm. I don't know. I haven't really ever thought about this, but I don't have anybody in particular. I admire anybody that's amazing. I admire them and I, I, I look into their story and even people that are alive now, you know, because everything's in the process of becoming right. And, and even Abraham Lincoln, it, it's amazing how he became what he became and how he became that. And he says something really interesting. I don't know if you guys have read uh, what's his book called, the yellow one. It's called Leadership Something by Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, it's a leadership book by Abraham. We made our whole office read it. We did read a book a month with our office, with everybody in our uh, corporate office. Uh, he said that what he thinks made him so confident and so strong. He had a stepmother uh, who was amazing to him. And she loved him so much and believed in him so much that that gave him like the confidence he needed it, it's really weird i don't know that book is amazing by the way it and and he says that is a big big reason why he believes that he's successful because he didn't he was successful in everything that he did and such a great leader right because he's one of the best leaders he could make anybody do anything right and he used to actually march out with all of his soldiers when he was president and he wouldn't just be like you go do it he would help everybody he was always available to anybody that needed him he was very accessible and everybody frowned upon that because they were like, why? Like anybody can come and just kill you, right? But he wasn't scared. He didn't care. And he, he said that, yeah, his mother's, stepmother's love made him just like amazing, believe in himself. It gave him an advantage to his brother's brother, I think, you know, brother and sister, siblings. That is so interesting. Now, if I give you a billboard, huge, giant billboard in the middle of the city, the most, you know, bus the busiest corner in the city. Which message could you put on so the people can get inspired? Not including your brand, that's out of the question also. Which message could you put on? Never be a quitter because a quitter one time is a quitter for life and fight for your dreams. That's the right. What about you, Sil? I was going to say never quit, just keep going. So you're in the same page. Yes. But but I would add it at the end just to make it to make it powerful is, um, like mo anybody can have anything. It's just that most people quit when they're like one inch away, and that last inch of pain is what people don't want to go through. And I've been I've been there, and and there's been times when I when I was like, man, is it time to call it a quit? Call it quits. And I just keep fighting through with all, an extreme amount of pain, and then things work out. And I'm like, whew, <laughs> let's do it again. Barely. <laughs> so, so like, like I just the reason why I do all these messages and inspirational things, and I and I say bad words, and I say what's on my mind, and I don't care what if people criticize me, if haters come out, I don't care. It doesn't, it doesn't, it it just gives me even more energy. And the reason why I do that is because I love inspiring and helping people. People tell me in the mornings, I, I get messages like, hey, I've gotten messages where people tell me yeah. I was about to take my life away and I didn't so because of the story that you put in the morning. And that's extreme. But I get a lot of messages, hundreds of people that tell me I needed this message this morning. What's the worst piece of advice that you heard someone tell, telling to some, someone else? No, to I know to what to, to work four hours a week, the four hour work week. You're, <laughs> you'll never be successful working four hour work week. Cause that's bullshit. You have to really put a lot of time in it. This is a good one. Don't buy um, apartment buildings because the tenants, you're going to have to fix their toilets and all, and they don't even have investments, which is kind of crazy. And that keeps a lot of people scared and they're like, oh my God, I never want to fix toilets. And I'll tell you what, the four units that I bought, the first one that I bought, it, it feels so so good and I wasn't even scared at all but it's because we're in the business you just go for it that's it like I didn't worry about the toilets I'll figure that right. out later right and a lot of people think too much and that's what stops where, where does sense of uh, self-confidence comes from I mean where do you get it because Albert you said no I, I am committed to this and when I'm committed it's gonna happen where do you get that from I feel I can do anything but you just feel where do you get that sense of confidence that actually makes it happen i mean i 
I can have confidence about whatever, but maybe I'm not going to be able to make it happen. <laughs> so why you are able to make it happen in your area? I mean, really, I always remember when I was six years old and the promise that I made to my father. And, and uh, every morning when I wake up, I try to not make noise, to not wake her up, not wake Italia up. And every morning when I wake up, the first thing I do is give them a kiss mm -hmm. while they're sleeping and, and, I, and, I, and I leave and I get out of the room mm -hmm. to not make noise. And every morning, uh, uh, what helps me, just what energizes me and gets me going in the morning, because every morning I wake up and I'm like, man, another day. I don't feel good. I have a headache. Not every morning. Or, or I mean, m most of the days I wake up and I'm like, ugh, <laughs> like, uh, like, cause I'm dehydrated. Uh, I need to drink water. So every morning I wake up and I have my whole routine. Like I, I go, I drink a lot of water. Uh, I don't really drink. I, I mean, I used to drink a little bit more, but right now I don't really drink alcohol. Like I don't drink alcohol. I drink a lot of water. Uh, I'm healthy and and I work out every morning. So every morning I do exercise. I drink a lot of water, I listen to audio or I read, and, and that kind of gets me going because I get ideas, and that puts me in the right mindset, and I keep going. But to answer your question, I mean, that helps me, but I just I just want to fight for my dreams. I want to fight for my max potential, and and that's what makes me happy, and I want to be happy. And if I don't, if I don't keep getting closer to my, to my target, I'm not happy. So I want to be happy. In order to be happy, I have to fight for these high targets that I set myself uh, to. And, and, and whenever I feel a little bit down, I remember I can't let my wife down and my daughters now that the second one that's coming. And, and I want to make my, my, my parents proud. I want to be an example. I want to be an example to the world. So I, I, I'm just really inspired naturally every day. I feel like I, it's my duty, my obligation to do something massive something great and i have another question because mm -hmm. i was uh, watching your videos in youtube or social media and uh albert you talk about uh, how many millions you're making you know and you are very open about that which is great and uh, however i was thinking and i and I, I don't know i feel kind of uh, confident to to be able to ask you this i mean you don't have to answer it if you don't want but when I go on, on, on the same platforms, I can see many other people, young people, and they always show, you know, and they have a big mansion. Yeah. They have big cars, and they say, look how successful I am. You, have, you can be as successful as me if you do what I'm doing. That's marketing. So, Albert, why you and why not them? What's the difference? You know what I mean? But, and I believe you, what you're saying, and I love your story, because you, you really were able to turn around the table and become something important, and you had the chance to become someone important in some other environment, probably in jail or whatever, <laughs> you know? So, but now you change your life dramatically, drastically. So, why and how can we set the difference between so many guys all muscles you know buff up and all that stuff talking about cars and you know bentley's and all that stuff uh, are they true are they honest i think there's a lot of people are trying to take shortcuts and uh, a lot of fake people out there like right now there's a lot of people and everybody right now is an influencer everybody out there is a coach right everybody is uh has a high ego and um everybody you know and and uh, but I think that what what most people lack right now is the level of commitment mm -hmm. and courage that it takes to become really successful, and those are my strongest points. I'm really committed, and I'm really courageous. Like there is nothing that scares me, nothing. Yeah, that, that's great. Now you have a dream board. Yeah. Do you? How do you have it? I mean, what is in it? <laughs> I mean, my, my my dream my dream board changes all the time. Uh, every morning, because you wake up very early. I know about your routine, and you know, but you have. How do you address it? How do you change it? Who changes yourself after you read a book? I, yeah, every. My, I mean, my dream board changes. My dreams change. Uh, As you they, they, just, they, they just every time I accomplish the. A dream, I immediately set a higher dream. 
and I always keep pushing myself to get better, to get better, to get better, to get better. It's like a race I have with myself because if I don't feel like I'm being extremely productive, I don't feel like I'm living. And I want to be living. You know, I want to be happy. It makes me, uh, even when I become a billionaire, uh, I'm going to be motivated to get, to keep improving, to keep yeah. improving, to keep making a difference. Do you have a hobby? Do you rest? No, <laughs> no. I, I I go to sleep when 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 my eyes are shutting when I collapse. So I I go to sleep with Italia, mm -hmm. and and um, and uh, she has she's in my arms and and I'm holding her and I go to sleep just when I when I can no longer keep my eyes open. And then I just wake up with my eyes open. So when I like last night she's like, Daddy, he was playing Play-Doh with her, playing Play-Doh in the night with her, because we were in the office pretty late. We're working on a lot of different things and literally the hours are not enough. It doesn't matter how many people we have on, on our team. It, it's just that massive, right? And it's funny because I didn't want to leave and he's like, let's go. I'm hungry and I'm sleepy or what? It was already like 9.30 and I'm like, oh, I, just, I need like 30 more minutes, right? 30 t always turns into an hour, two yeah. hours. But we're, he was like, no, let's go. So I get all my stuff. I pack up everything and then I go to him. He's like, oh, I already ate and... And I'm not sleepy. I'm like, uh-uh, we're leaving because you made me put everything away. Now the baby thinks we're on our way. And it was crazy. We get there. He's playing Play-Doh with her. She's so happy. Kids just want you to love them, right? They want your attention. Right. Material things won't ever replace your actual love for them, right? And he's playing with her. And I'm like, oh, I felt so bad because I made him food. I get, We get home. I make him food. The nanny leaves. And he's playing with her. And he's so tired because he gets up, yeah, way before I do, for sure. If I can squeeze in an extra hour of sleep, especially now I'm pregnant, I'm tired, I'm working extra, 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 but that's not an excuse. I'm still going to get it done no matter what, right? But he's playing with her and his eyes are literally shutting. Like his eyes are shutting as he's playing with her. And I was like, come on, Italia, we're going to go to bed because daddy's sleepy. She's like, no, 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 daddy, wake up, wake up because she wants to play with him, right? It's of, crazy, of but that made me think of that. And it's so cute. He's the best dad ever. So the, what I'm learning here is that nevertheless that you are making lots of money by your own uh, declaration. Mm -hmm. I mean, you still work and you put a lot of hours. A lot. I, I really don't think that anybody works harder than me. I work harder than you sometimes. Well, that's <laughs> and and <laughs> I, I just I just really believe it. I, I really believe it, and that's why I'm totally against uh, the four-hour work week or people thinking that they could work a little less and make more money. Or or that's that I think that's the main reason why most, especially right now in the world of millennials, they they're just wired incorrectly. Like the, it, it really takes. You have to have that hard, that work ethic, and that's why you, you, you'll find the richest people, mm -hmm. the wealthiest people, are the ones that work the hardest. Tell them and, what the billionaire and, and, and told the, us. And the poorest are, are the ones that work the least. They're the laziest. Uh, I asked this billionaire. Mm -hmm. uh, now that you made it, you're worth four billion. Uh, do you take it easy a little bit? Do you work a little less? And he said, Yeah. Um, I cut back on my work hours. I work half, ha half, uh, half, half of the day now. <laughs> now I work from eight to eight. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great. That's awesome. Now, well, isn't oh, that right. amazing? That's like, amazing. And if you really think about it, I read this quote that says that the the rich broke the rich work like they're running out of money, and the broke work like they and and it sounds mean to say it like that, but. If you don't work really, really hard, you're always going to be in the same situation, in the same place with the same people, right? And so many of us, I had a hard time letting go of, like, people that weren't good for me. He saw that they weren't good for me, but I wanted to hold on to these people because I was like, I'm not going to have any friends. But now I have an excess of amazing women around me, like, people that are actually happy for me doing good. Not saying, oh, you don't have time for me. Oh, this and that. And you have to detach. And it's not necessarily saying like, oh, I can't talk to you anymore. You run out of time to spend with these people. It's weird because they're not, it, it's a give and take relationship. And right. it's, so many people just want to take, 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 take. And it doesn't work like that. Do you have a vision of you, you guys in 10 years from now? Oh God. <laughs> 11 years, our company is going to be worth 200 billion. But I think we could do it in seven years. And uh, people in our company are going to get equity. Uh, of course, people that earn it. So we're going to spread the wealth. Everybody's going to leave happy and with a lot of money. 
And then what I'm going to do with my portion, and I'm sure everybody in our company is going to do the same because everybody, uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at communicating with them and enrolling them into our vision because it's a vision for in seven or eight years. Uh, we'll all be um, semi-retired uh, with a lot of money and we're going to dedicate ourselves to like make a difference in this world. I want to change the schooling system because I don't, I think it's, it's shit. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of things that I want to fix. And uh, that's going to be my passion, like just making a difference for the better in this world. And, um, and yeah, like I, I, I that, that's what drives me. That's what drives me. So I understand that it's uh, going to be like, it's going to take about 11 years, but I think we could do it in in uh, seven or eight years. Awesome. And still, do you have any projection? Well, I know I'll have two daughters for sure. We might have another son. Uh, Every year has been, like I said, better than the last, especially these last two years have been crazy, but ask me how much extra work we've had to do. A lot more on a different level with a lot more employees. So it just takes a lot, right? It's never just going to be overnight unless you create this magic app and what, you'll make a million or two, or have you created Facebook? <laughs> yeah. I don't know how long that took, but I don't know. I know, I know it's always going to be, there's no way that him and I cannot work. There, there's just no way. So I don't know. I don't. I don't know. We'll what, see. What would be your, because we have to finish the conversation. Yeah. I really love to keep talking. <laughs> we can but talk all day. Yeah, but what would be your your final message to the audience? Your, you know, one message that you really I'm have. I'm going to go first or you want to go? You go first. Never give up. Keep going. Do different things if you want a different result. Because so many people do the same thing over and over and over and over again and expect a different result. And it doesn't work. You have to invest in yourself. And these are like a bunch of little nuggets. You have to invest in yourself. It, it seems crazy to be like, I'm not going to go to seminars. I'm not going to read a book. But you'll sit there and watch a whole like Netflix show or I don't know, all the things that all these people talk about. We don't even watch TV. If I'm lucky, we'll watch a movie and he'll fall asleep the first five minutes, literally. At home, at the theater, it doesn't matter. And investing, in, if you bet on yourself and you give everything that you have literally without excuses without bullshit because so many people we we tell ourselves a lot of bs we do right excuses as to why we can't do it important rationalizing and exactly yeah. how about just go all in go all in do everything in your part and if you don't succeed you're gonna land somewhere up there and you're gonna be way better than you were right and it's nevertheless little, you're gonna be in better posi yeah, position absolutely and it's gonna be little habits little habits we have this event it's called driven event you could go to drivenevent.com it happens every september this year it's september 14th so just go to our, our website it's uh, drivenevent.com and we have all of our tickets and this conference is amazing there's a lot of real millionaires um hopefully a billionaire or two we have a, a lineup and we have a few speakers we still have to announce but it's it's going to be amazing and self-improvement nobody can take it from you so that's my 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 advice that i can give all of you just keep going be a better person every single day and do more excellent what about you yeah, so just to, to add a little bit to that, uh, Driven Event is based on our, our four principles, sales, systems, training, and, and marketing, and we go really deep in it, and we have experts that talk about it, and I talk about it, but my biggest advice for anybody is to invest all your money and go broke, and invest all your money into self-improvement. If you have $5,000, invest it in, in, invest those $5,000 and pay a coach 5000 bucks. If you have 500, go to a $500 coach and get him. He's going to teach you at least how to do something, right? But if you have 100,000, spend 100,000 on the, on the on the mentor that's that high of a level. And and because knowledge is priceless. Mm -hmm. And once you get the knowledge, you'll start making money. Once you start to get making money, no matter how old you are, the sooner the better. Start investing in real estate. Mm -hmm. Start accumulating a four-unit property, a three-unit property, a four-unit property, a three-unit property, four-unit, four-unit, four-unit. We accumulated about 18 units and sold them, sold most of them, and um, made us over two million. We used all that money to open more businesses and get more real estate, and money just started growing. Mm -hmm. Because of real estate, is a big reason why we're here. Mm -hmm. And it was just a combination of a, lot, of a lot of things, but we got all that because of the knowledge, the money that we invested into Grant Cardone, Patrick, but David, and and people like that. So a lot of money. Invest in knowledge, 
and then you'll make money and then you get the, the money and then you start buying a few properties here a few multi-units apartments and and you're gonna be set anything else that you would like to add to this conversation or you feel that this is the end we love you i mean i mean i, mean, uh, I think we covered most of the things I right mean, it, it, i love it, it. Th thank you two, thank two you. important things are courage and work ethic and and be ethical you know mm -hmm. be ethical ethics ethics is huge we we in our in our in our company and our our environment is is really ethical we don't have to worry about somebody cheating stealing lying um it you have to be really ethical like when when you're ethical like when you're honest you don't have to have that extra stress and you could focus on 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 your on your dreams on your vision and 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 you're free you know you're free and right. and there's nothing that if you have if you're ethical you have the work ethic and your commitment, you have commitment and you're courageous, you're going to be unstoppable. So I think that's why I feel like I can do anything because I'm really courageous. I, I, I have commitment and I have work ethic and discipline. Yeah. You know, ethics uh, is a way to say it. it's very important to be honest, but that means respect. If I am dishonest with you, means that I don't respect you, correct? And that's why it's so important what you just said, Albert, because when the people feel that they are respected, they give you the best from themselves. You know, that's very important. And I've heard this, uh, somebody once told me that, good things for good people. And if you really think about it, it makes sense, right? Right, right. So, Albert, still, what a pleasure to have you here. I mean, I learn a lot, <laughs> and uh, hopefully we keep talking. And, uh, you know, catch up later on. Yeah, see what's we can going go on. eat. Yeah. <laughs> After I'm not pregnant, we can go have some drinks. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. It I always love it. It goes by so fast. <laughs> yeah. We talk about many things. And <laughs> did you, you guys like it? I loved it. You like it? Okay. You? Yeah, Albert? I loved it. Awesome. <laughs> I wasn't that quiet, huh? No, no, it's He's awesome. Not. It's great. Wow. That's good. <laughs> Producer. Muy bien. We're not going to edit it. So, más de una hora y quince casi. Oh, wow. Yeah, pero muy interesante. Muchas gracias. Felicitaciones. Awesome. Podemos hablar todo el día. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sí, hubieran sido más horas. Ah, but you're uh, so great. You too, Seal. Thank you so much. I was in Thank that you guys. Oh, oh, my God. So interesante. Muy entretenido. Muy real. Sí. No. D divino. Pienso que muy, va a ayudar muy. mucho a, a todos. La gente.